Hey everyone, Shane here with eTrailer.com. Today we have a 2020 Volkswagen Golf. I'm gonna walk through how to install the draw tight class one trailer hitch receiver. Adding a hitch receiver to your vehicle is gonna give you a lot of different options. Maybe you have bikes and you're tired of loading them inside, taking up extra room that you can put other passengers in. Or maybe uh, you don't wanna buy a roof rack and have to lift your bikes up and put them on the roof each time. Adding a receiver on, it's going to allow you to put a bike rack back here, give you plenty of room inside so you can fit more passengers. And again, we don't have to lift them up and take them off the top of the roof. Also, we can put a cargo carrier on it. Maybe we want to get some extra items out from inside to outside to make a little bit more room for some other things we need to bring. Maybe we want to tow a small trailer. This is going to allow us to do all of that. Keep in mind, uh, this is a class one hitch, so you're going to be limited up to a two bike bike rack. You can see cross tube is going to be completely hidden behind our bumper fascia. The only thing we can really see is our receiver tube and our safety chain loops. It's going to be a steel construction, black powder coat finish. It's really going to hold up well against rust and corrosion. We're going to have an inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter receiver tube opening. Hitch pin hole, which is going to be here. It's going to be half inch in diameter. It's going to take a standard half inch hitch pin. Hitch pin and clip does not come with this hitch. However, you can find them here at e-trailer, and that's what's going to secure your items into your receiver tube. Safety chain loops are going to be rolled steel. You can see very large openings. Will accommodate pretty large hooks. Now we're going to go ahead and give you some weight capacities and measurements to help you when deciding on any of those hitch mount accessories you may need. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the outermost part of our bumper fascia, it's going to be about four inches. That's important for any of our hitch mount accessories like our bike racks and cargo carriers that may fold up against the vehicle. We want to make sure they're not going to make contact. From the ground to the top innermost part of our receiver tube, it's going to be about 13 inches. Keep that number in mind for any of your hitch mount accessories that may require a little bit more ground clearance. As far as our weight capacities go, we're going to have a 200 pound max tongue weight, which is a downward pressure on the inside of the receiver tube. So when you're loading the cargo carrier or bike rack, make sure you're not exceeding that. We're going to have a 2,000 pound gross trailer weight, which is a trailer plus a load included. I always recommend checking the owner's manual of the vehicle. Make sure the vehicle can withstand that amount of weight. You're going to go with the lowest number between the vehicle and the hitch. Now that we've gone over some of the features, let's walk through how to get it installed. To start our installation, we're going to take a T25 Torx bit. We're going to take the Torx head bolt off the bottom corner where our wheel wall liner meets our fascia, and it's going to be on each side. Then on each side, we're going to take a T15 Torx bit. We're going to remove this one, we're going to have the same thing on the opposite side of the vehicle. We're going to take our T25 Torx bit. On the inside of each wheel well liner, we're going to have three Torx head bolts. Last one's going to be right up here. We're going to peel the wheel well liner back, and you're going to have one right in this corner that goes up like this. You need to remove all four of those. be right there. This one can be a little bit trying to get to. Try and get your socket on there. Uh, it may be easier if you have it on the ground uh, to let your wheel hang a little bit or to raise up the back of the vehicle enough so it separates from the body of the vehicle. Next we need to remove our tail lights. We're going to come inside the hatch and on each side right behind the tail light there's a little panel. There's a little uh, wing bolt that's there. Uh, you can usually spin it off with your fingers because they're not real tight. If you can't, you can use a flathead screwdriver. And then we're going to slide our taillight straight back. And if you can't get it from here, there's a little red lock tab. And we're going to push this brown tab and separate our light. Do that same thing on the other side. Now what I like to do is take some painter's tape before you remove the fascia. We're going to run it right along the edge where the rear fascia meets this panel. 
That way when we're taking it off, putting it back on, if we have to move the fascia around at all, if they make contact, you don't take a chance of chipping the paint or scratching it. Next, we're gonna start pulling off our fascia. You'll notice these little tabs in here. Now, these can be a pain uh, to get loose. Uh, and you may end up cracking this. But we're gonna try not to. You take a trim panel tool and we're gonna try to push down on this tab as we're pulling out. We're gonna start down here and work our way up to the top. Just gonna work our way all the way around like this. work our way to the center. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now, it's a good idea to have an extra set of hands if possible. If not, take the hitch that your box, or take the box that your hitch comes in, slide it under the edge of your fascia. That way, when you get one side loose, you can set it on the box instead of on the ground. We don't have to worry about damage in the bottom, but keep in mind, we don't just wanna pull it off because we have sensors here. We wanna make sure we are disconnecting those wires so they don't get damaged. The sensor wire is going to run right up under here. We're going to push down on this back side to disconnect it. You may have to slide the little locking tab back toward you and push down this little tab here. Then we're going to set our fascia aside somewhere safe so it doesn't get damaged. On our passenger side, you're gonna see a wire that runs to, uh, connects onto a sensor on your bumper beam. We need to disconnect that. A little tab right there on top. If you push in, push down on that, and pull it out. So that side, we'll be hooking that back up in a few minutes. Take a 13 millimeter socket, we're gonna remove the four bolts on each side. And actually the driver's side only has three bolts, not four. Gotta get this out of the way. We're gonna lift and slide it out. It's gonna have little tabs on the back side that sit down in little slots. Now the next set of hands, we're gonna take our bumper beam, set it on our hitch to line up the holes, and we're gonna lift it into place. Your hitch is gonna come with new hardware it's gonna look like this. I'm gonna make sure you put these on the outside. And we're gonna install one bolt on each side to help hold our hitch in place while we install our remaining hardware. Once we get a, a hardware in place, go ahead and tighten everything down. And make sure you don't forget to just to reconnect that cable. Once we have everything tight, we're gonna come back and we're gonna to torque it to the specifications and the instructions. Now before we go into trimming our rear fascia uh, for a hitch, if you're also adding wiring, it's a good idea if you want the four pole wired outside or you want it routed outside, uh, to go ahead and do it now while the face is off, it's going to make it a lot easier. But it's going to connect to the wires behind each one of your tail lights, and then you can just route your four pole wire down and over behind your bumper beam. If not, wiring harness uh, can live inside the vehicle. Next, we need to trim out a small section on our rear fascia. You'll notice this opening. They don't really give you clear instructions on where to actually start to cut. We're going to find center of the vehicle, which is about here. It's gonna be two inches up by three inches wide. 
I'm just going to use a rotary tool with a cutting blade. And then the little plastic burrs that are on there, you can just take your utility knife, just run it across the edge, and clean that up. Once you're done trimming, you can go ahead and test fit your fascia, uh, determine if you need to make any more adjustments with the trimming, and then you can just reinstall your fascia in reverse order from the way you took it off. Once you've got your fascia reinstalled, you reinstalled your lights, you're ready to go. It's going to do it for a look at an installation on a draw tight class one trailer hitch receiver on a 2020 Volkswagen Golf.